evening to sit in the room with Anthony. I always wondered why Anthony, could Anthony sing like that? And then I saw a little cup with some oil. I'm telling you, oil is in Gracie Mansion, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> At this time, I have the pleasure of saying thank you first to our Council General, who continues to work so diligently in our communities, the Guyanese community, to bring us all together and always keep us abreast of everything that's going on. And I also have the distinct pleasure of introducing to you this evening our Honorable Riyad Insanali, as Ambassador of Guyana to the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a big hand. And I'm delighted that Mayor de Blasio and First Lady McRae have chosen to honor 50 Guyanese nationals who have made outstanding contributions to their homeland and as members of our diaspora to their adopted communities in this great city of New York. It gives me great pleasure to point out that two of the honorees this evening have been recognized in this year's national awards announced on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Republic with the Medal of Service, namely Mark Anthony Benscott. I sincerely thank Mayor de Blasio and First Lady McCrae for recognizing the accomplishments of these 50 Guyanese. In so doing, they honor not only the 50, but also the entire Guyanese community they represent, and by extension, the country of their birth, our dear land of Guyana. To the 50, I say you have done us all proud. You do Guyana proud, and I am proud to be here today. On behalf of the government of Guyana, I congratulate you on your achievements, as I also congratulate all Guyanese living here on all that they do, on all that you do, ladies and gentlemen, as hardworking, enterprising, upstanding citizens who keep the golden arrowhead flying proudly. Since 50 is the theme this evening, permit me a few reflections. Some of you may not remember what you were doing 50 years ago, and some of you were probably not born yet. But at the risk of aging myself, I, I have some memories. 50 years ago, I was in the common entrance class at Sacred Heart Roman Catholic School in Georgia, preparing to win a place at Queen's College in the first year of the Republic. 50 years ago, I had the special joy of participating in Guyana's first matrimony celebration, mashing in Godfrey Chin's spectacular birth of a nation. Some of you remember that, right? Yes. Fifty years ago, I was taught that we were a country of enormous potential. And in the first blush of Republican status, my schoolmates and I thought that the future was very bright indeed, and that the horizons were infinite. But as all you all know, growing up has its trials and tribulations. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my message to Guyanese communities over the past couple of weeks has been essentially the same. I've had the privilege to speak to a few groups of Guyanese, and in that time, I have had the, uh, I've had the same message, which I shall paraphrase in the interest of time this evening. The theme for this landmark anniversary is reflect, celebrate, transform. It cannot be more appropriate given the juncture in our history at which we find ourselves. <laughs> this is a time for reflecting on how far or how little we have traveled as an independent nation and as a republic, on our collective achievements and on our collective failings, on the process of finding our way in a not always friendly neighborhood and world, and on where we are about to go now that we are officially a petroleum-producing state. These are exciting times for Guyana. 
balanced, of course, by a certain amount of apprehension for the future. This is only natural when great change is in the offing. Guyana is set to become one of the fastest growing countries in the world in economic terms, and by 2025, production could be anywhere up to 1 million barrels per day, making Guyana one of the biggest <laughs> But we need to ensure that rapid and dramatic economic growth translates into a proportional rise in income levels for the average citizen and that revenues are spent responsibly on better and fair public sector emoluments, yes. on education for all, on health for all, on security for all, and infrastructure for the development of the country to ensure a higher standard of living for all. Yes. Yes. The March 2nd elections will be critical to future social and political stability, and for ensuring that Guyana remains on the trajectory for accelerated and inclusive economic growth. Thus, even as we celebrate 50 years as a republic, and with the country on the cusp of a massive economic and social transformation, this is a time of reflection on the renewal of efforts to build a more prosperous and equitable country. Change will be far reaching and rapid, and the country needs to be prepared for it. Guyana has perhaps a once in a generation opportunity to realize the potential of which generations of Guyanese have dreamt, of which we have all dreamt. Managing the transition, managing expectations, managing suspicions will not be easy. But we are a proud and resourceful people, and we can do it. So let us celebrate and let us at the same time reflect on how we can successfully transform our dear land of Guyana. Through a huge collective effort involving not only our political leadership and technocrats, but all stakeholders, including our international partners and you in our diaspora, to get things right. Many of us will not be here 50 years from now. <laughs> we need to get things right now. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your kind attention. Happy yeah. birthday. You could do better than that. Come on. We have more beats in the house. Yeah. Pleasants, Buxton, Esri yeah. Cremo, West Demolara, Sue's Dyke. Where's everybody? Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. We certainly appreciate it. And truly, we have learned from our history. Never again must we return to a place of struggle and enslavement. We have come a long way together as one people, one nation, one destiny. Six peoples, our diverse cultures of every color, race, religion, and creed coming together to celebrate this, our 50th Republic anniversary. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting a sample of paint to print collection from the fine arts painting oil in Guyana. Here are Ashvini Persad, Sarah. Give her a big hand. Come on, come on, come on.
away upon the roads to get my pot of gold, my journey to combat. Under the shores, like men of your toiling in the sun and heat of this blessed earth, my middle songs will speak. Like poetry and the reverend youth, with reverence meet, I bow. My mud feet on the ground that my God did speak and shout to the heavens, my Eldorado, I found which we seek. To journey home and all my rivers, banks, and caves, my vivid dream and my Cinderella will come to talk in lofty praise. Of my travels and things I have seen under the moonlit sky of the days, bring to life a newborn to the essence of life once left amazed. And the things that men found can never be heaven bound and grave like food to return to the proper own, to reveal the vision of old age, all sons and daughters will journey to, and always will remain in Diana's heartland, where from the bosom remembers again, even in solitude and distant land, I will hasten to bring fame to my beloved mother or father, my heartfelt love, a heart which bled in pain. Deborah, Burgess, as you come away, the power of me, Diana remains for you, and for you, and for you, and for you. Destiny, mama, look from where you call in. Destiny, mama, look from where you call in me. I wanna rule my destiny. Come on, sing the song. Everything with 
retirees with little pension or next to nothing. Who was getting all of here? That's oozing. The old woman singing. A little more oil in my lap. an ambitious agenda in support of all of you, all New Yorkers. Clap yourself for that. <laughs> Nationally recognized as a powerful champion for mental health reform and dubbed one of Time Magazine's 50 most influential people in healthcare for 2018. Ms. McCray created Thrive NYC. I know you know about that. Thrive NYC, the most comprehensive mental health plan of any city or state. In this, in this nation. She also spearheads the city's Thrive Coalition with more than 200 mayors, county officials, and thought leaders from all 50 states, advocating for a more integrated and better funded behavioral health system. A lifelong activist and writer and poet, First Lady McCray 
continues to fight for gender equity and LGBTQ rights, support survivors of gender-based violence, and create a more inclusive New York, New York City. She brings her deeply held commitment to the mental health and well-being of people and communities to, to everything she does. It is your time now to welcome the passionate First Lady of the City of New York. Yeah. experiences a mental health condition in any given year. All of our families, we are all touched by this. There's no individual this, individual that. We all are somebody's child. Am I right? Yeah. That's right. But here are some real headlines. Half of all mental health conditions begin, all lifetime mental health conditions begin by or before the age of 14. Did you know that? No, I know, right? Well, we've known this for a long time. We have to pay attention to our children, not write off their behavior. People wait an average of 10 years before getting help. Did you know that? No. 10 years. No disease gets better if you wait, does it? No. And less than half of those people who need treatment don't get it. We have, it's a shame, it really is, because we know how to treat this. We have, we have so many services and people need to get access to it. Now, I am a granddaughter of the Caribbean. I grew up here, but I can tell you, we never talked about any of this. I'm not the feelings or the emotions or any of it. Does anyone else have family like mine? <laughs> Well, that is why education is so important. Talking about mental health helps eliminate the stigma and the misconceptions that people have. And this is something that every single one of us can do, ourselves and for our families and for our community. So you can call 1-888-NYC-WELL and speak to a trained counselor to talk through a problem if you don't know what to do about it, you can talk to somebody for free. Did you hear me say free? Free. Yeah, what did I say? Free. You can call 188 NYC Well if a family or a friend, a family member or a friend is drinking too much alcohol or is struggling with addiction. And you know what? It's free. Free. All right. 
right? Yes. You can call 1-888-NYC well if you want mental health first aid training to learn more about mental health and be better able to help your family or your community. Can you say mental health first aid training with me? Man. Mental health first aid training. And how do you get it? You call that number. <laughs> One more time. What is it? NYC Well. Mental Health First Aid Training. So that number is like one stop shopping. You can get information, you can get connected to training, you can get connected to services, or you can just talk to somebody. And it's free. <laughs> you, you got there before me. <laughs> so what's the number? You know, Guyanese Americans know how to live life with joy and, and bring its fullest and live life to its fullest. And they generously bring all of us along with you. We are so fortunate to have you as friends and New Yorkers. I congratulate you on this golden anniversary for the golden arrowhead. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce a man who cares deeply for this community. Uh, the love of my life, my partner, and me. Welcome home, everybody. Fifty years. Half a century. Yes. Remember back then they said these new dynamic nations would never make it, right? Remember, remember back then all the naysayers, all the doubters, all the people said not only Guyana but so many other nations weren't ready. Well, half a century ready, half a century later, half a century strong, Guyana has proven amazing, amazing things over half a century. You feeling proud tonight? Yeah. For the first time, for the first time ever, ever in the history of, well, let me ask you this. And we love Guyana, we love all the cities and towns, but can you agree with me, maybe, that this is the greatest city in the world right here? Yeah. Yeah. Since we have established that fact, for the first time, for the first time here, in the seat of power, in the official residence, for the first time in the history of New York City, Guyana is celebrated at Gracie Mansion. Yeah. And you have earned it. You have earned it. Everyone in this room, I, I love you for your pride. Thank you. I love you for your pride. I love you for your pride in your homeland. I know how committed you are to your homeland. I know how close you feel to your homeland. But I also love you because of everything you do to make New York City great. Yeah. This is a celebration of Guyana, it's a celebration of heritage, but it's also a celebration of how everything that Guyana sent us made us better here in New yes, York City. Yes. This is a thank you. This is a, we're sending a big thank you note to Guyana for making New York City better. Yeah. For giving us a You heard from her heart that our First Lady, how she cares for everyone here, everyone in the city. And she likes to get a little deep into talking about her passion, which is mental health. But she does it out of love, and she does it to deputize you. She does it to ask you to become ambassadors and educators and forces of inspiration to help people feel okay about themselves and get the help they need. Will you do that for her? Yeah! yeah. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. Yeah. Guyana has sent many great people to New York City. As I said, I've met many. Uh, one I have met, I think, 
Even though he's a great person, I think he may be superhuman. He is sitting here on the stage. I, for the first day I met Pastor James Richmond, I said, whatever he's eating for breakfast, I want to eat for breakfast. He has been, he was one of the people, I can honestly say, one of the architects of the effort that brought Shirley and I to City Hall to begin with. He is a well-respected member of our clergy advisory council. Every time I turn to him, something good happens. And he called me, and I'm going to use a, an edgy word here. He called me with a certain obsessive interest in having this event. <laughs> he said, we have to have an event for the 50th anniversary. I, I'm like, yeah. I said, okay, James, that's great. He said, no, we really have to have it. I'm like, I got you, Lord. I got you. So, <laughs> and he has put his heart and soul. I know so many other people here have done so much. But I want to give credit where credit is due. We have this amazing gathering because one man had a heart and soul to say it had to happen, and here we are. Let's thank James Woo! Richard. Yeah! public service, a lot of people do so much for this community and all communities of this city, and this is an opportunity for them to be here to honor the guy in this community, but also for the community to get to know them and appreciate them. I'm going to call them out. I want you to well, warmly, warmly applaud for all of them. Our Deputy Mayor, Phil Thompson. <laughs> Small Business Services Commissioner, Greg Bishop. <laughs> Commissioner and Lieutenant Colonel, Commissioner of the Department of Veterans Services, James Hendon. Woo! Our Chair of the City Planning Commission, Marisa Lago. Woo! My Senior Advisor and a Director of the Mayor's Office of Minority and Women-Owned Businesses, Janelle Doris. Woo! And the Director, or the Executive Director of the Office of Special Projects and Community Events, who played a key role in making sure this event happened, Melissa Brown. Woo! And elected officials who are here, we value and appreciate all they do for the community and the work we all do together. I want to welcome State Assemblyman Nick Perry. <laughs> and State Assemblyman David Weperin. <laughs> and the homeland is here with us, Guyanese. We are well represented here in the room and an honored to have Gracie Manchin, your ambassador to the United States the Honorable Riyadh Insanami. Yeah. And the Council General, uh, the Council General to New York, the Honorable Barbara Atherley. Yeah. So, everyone's crowded together. It's like being, it's like having a reception in a subway park. <laughs> so, Ambassador, Council General, please accept our informality. It's the way we do things here. Um, I'm going to be very quick and say this. So, there is a misconception. The misconception about New York City often is people from all around the world, they look at the pictures, they see the buildings, the monuments, the skyline, and so many people think that's New York City. That is a part of New York City. But what is actually the heart and soul and the value and the, the special, extraordinary thing about New York City is the people. Oh, yeah. The people. Yeah. And why? Because every country said their very best. Yeah. Yes. Now, we believe in everyone. That's not a statement of uh, the wrong kind of exceptionality. We love everyone of every kind. There is a uh, political figure in America whose name I'm not going to use because I don't want to sully this. No, I said I'm going to use it, damn it. Come on. Come on, don't harsh my buzz over here. Uh, there's a political figure who once alleged that some nations sent their worst or didn't send their best. I have, I have the honor of really being in the communities of our city every single day. I know Guyana sent their best. It's got a theme here, I like it. Uh, 
And here's what we have to help everyone understand, not just about New York City, but about America. Our greatness is the people. If nations around the world sent their people, if their people escaped tyranny, if their people sought opportunity, whatever the motivation, we were given this blessing to take all of humanity and blend it together in one place. And then is it any accident that we're the greatest city in the world? Think about it for a moment. The, the ideology out there that's fearful of us all being together actually is going to rob us of our potential for greatness. So if you say, is there, is there any place on earth more diverse than New York City? No. no. We are all here together. And we're the greatest. Doesn't that add up? Yes. We are the greatest for that reason. Now, some communities are renowned and been around for centuries, but there are other communities that are just beginning to get the recognition. And the Guyanese community is coming into its own. The Guyanese community is contributing more and more to New York City. It may not be the best known community, but more and more, this is one of the communities that is defining New York City. Whether it is culture or music or food or involvement in our democratic system, and especially in something I experience all the time, the public servants who serve this city, who come from this community. Anyone in this room a public servant? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. A lot of people who give their all. We've got officers who serve us. Thank you, officer. Thank you. People who bring themselves forward and give so much. And now, slowly but surely, and this 50th anniversary is so important for this reason, New York City is starting to wake up to another part of what we truly are. This is a time, a coming of age for the Guyanese community, a moment to finally get recognition that has been so long deserved. And when we decided to have this event, it was with the hope and the belief that it would educate people all over the city of all backgrounds to understand just how special this community is. Now that said, there are people who do not want you to be recognized. What? Yeah, there are people who do not want you to be recognized. And I'm not gonna name any specific political figures, but there are people who want you to be ignored. And the founding fathers of this nation made a decision long ago there would be a census every 10 years. And that was supposed to be the level playing field. That was supposed to be the opportunity to really figure out who we were. And those numbers being accurate speak volumes. When those numbers are flawed, they speak volumes the wrong way. Well, unfortunately, the history has been the people have never really been counted. I hope you're braced for this fact. Here in America, Consistently, traditionally, our census undercounts people of color. It is part of how people of color are systematically devalued. Especially in Richmond Hill. And so, what are you doing? What about Brooklyn? We are not going to sit idly by and let people be devalued and ignored and uncounted, are we? No. Okay. There is. I want to make everyone, because everyone's going to be deputized in a moment. I'm going to deputize you too. There is no immigration question. Nope. Okay, that got struck down. There's still a lot of fear. There's a lot of confusion. A lot of misunderstanding. A lot of people only participate if someone they trust tells them it's okay. And you are who they trust. So if we get it right, we get people involved, we get them to understand this is actually part of the coming of age of the community. It's part of the empowerment of the community to be counted in the census. If we get it wrong, the community is grievously undercounted. And this community and so many others lose brothers and sisters, not millions, trillions. not millions of dollars, billions trillions. of dollars in federal aid to New York City. If our numbers are, do not reflect our people, we stand to lose billions of dollars, we stand to lose a seat in the House of Representatives. And you've seen how one vote can matter in our Congress. <laughs> or else we wouldn't have the Affordable Care Act anymore. One vote, <laughs> one vote. So this is as serious as it gets. And it's all going to kick off in a few weeks. And everyone in this room has a chance to tell your family, your friends, co-workers, the people you worship with, everyone in your community, that this must happen. And they cannot live in fear. People who dislike you, people who disrespect you, people who devalue you, want you to be afraid. 
you must respond to them with courage and strength. Mm -hmm. So everyone in this room, raise your right hand. <laughs> Repeat after me, I guarantee. I guarantee. That the Guyanese community. That the Guyanese community. Will be counted. 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 One hundred percent. Pastor. Pastor Richmond, can I get an amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> All right. I think we've had enough of a formal program. I think everyone should continue to enjoy being together and the fellowship and the power and the just sense of sheer celebration after 50 great years. But we should end with a song, don't you think? Yeah. All right. So this is all, no, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> You really don't want this to happen. You can do it! No. Anything else I can do for you, you don't want that. Okay. It's about pride, and we have a singer born in Guyana. But we're very pleased to call him a New Yorker now. He shares his Guyanese pride all over the city. And there's no better proof of that than this song. And I love a song that tells you exactly what it wants oh, to tell you. The song is, I am a Guyanese. That's right, that is the best song. Let's welcome Adrian, Adrian Dutchin. Dutchin.
If you don't know to sing, I have a teacher. Come right here for me. Right I just want you to say this. Say, I am a. And I bet you they know what to say. Say, I am a. I am a. Thank you. Just heard. Good job, baby. Are you proud? <laughs> 